Hey, what's up, beautiful people? It's Sindarama. Welcome to the channel. Today, we have this very interesting video, and it's from Greg from the Black Conservative Perspective. And it's titled Jason Aldean says woke CBS anchor straight on try that in the small town song, not being racist. Awesome. So, we're back at it again for the Jason Aldean try that in the small town song because when the song was trending, people had so many narrative about it so many issues and talks and everything but yeah i'm excited to hear what jason alden i've got to say on this interview let's check it out so are we going to talk about the racist dog whistles in jason aldean's new song or no as you probably heard jason aldean's video for try that in a small town has just been pulled from country music television and uh he's out there playing the victim and uh, saying that the video absolutely isn't what it very well is. Mm. The video is a message to the Black Lives Matter movement that they'd better stay away from him and his uh, because they got guns and they protect their own. Uh, it, the video features him standing front of a, in front of a building that is the famous site of a mob lynching a young 18-year-old black man and it's got an American flag hanging on it, and it's interspersed with uh, footage from Black Lives Matter uh, protests. What it doesn't have is footage of people who are likely members of his audience attacking the Capitol on January 6th uh, and killing five police officers. But it does talk about disrespecting the police, those Black Lives Matter people. So I wish he'd just, you know, own it. You know, if you're gonna if you're gonna sow this division, then own it. What division, sir? And uh, while we're at it, let's send the message out to his wife that uh, being a tomboy as a child is way different than being a transgender child. So when she thanks her parents for not changing her sex when she went through her tomboy phase. Uh, she is just show, sowing division and hate. Really? And it's a shame that this couple, with all of their uh, influence, are using it to do that because they know that sowing division and hate among their people makes them lots of money. So let's not kid ourselves. Um, all right, guys. So we got to react to this CBS interview featuring Jason Aldean because she is going to confront him on the backlash that he has gotten from his hit song try that in a small town which is a song that the race hustlers of america mm. boohoo whine and cried about claiming that he's talking about lynching black people even though he doesn't mention anything about black people what he talks about is protecting his small mm. town from criminals who you know loot and steal and destroy which is what happened during, you know, the BLM protests, the Antifa riots, uh, the Roe v. Wade riots, etc. Right? This is what far leftists do, and because the left thinks that all black people are criminals, they automatically interpret it as racist. Well, he must be talking about blacks mm. if he's talking about uh, stopping criminals from being able to loot, rob, steal, and be agents of chaos. Right? And the mainstream liberal media went along with it for the most part. And it really is a damn shame that Jason Aldean has to sit down and do interviews like this in the first place to try to explain the meaning of the song. Exactly. Because anybody with any common sense and does not believe that all black people are criminals knows that the song is not racist. Mm -hmm. It really is a conversation we shouldn't be having in this country, but we are because, again, the race hustling left wants to make anything that they disagree with uh, oh, racist. Uh. Okay, so without further ado, let's go ahead and react to this action when you saw people saying that this had racist um, undertones and you know it was How like a call to hell? arms you know it was like a call to arms in small towns um, it was a threatening kind of video for black people I mean people were putting this on like, but there was TikTok. there was people of all color doing stuff in the video that's what I don't understand you know there was there was white people in there there was black people I mean th this video did not shine light on one specific group and say that's the problem so, and anybody that saw that in the video, then you weren't looking hard enough in the video, exactly. is all I can tell you. And you're racist, okay? Because, <laughs> again, um, if you watch that video and your takeaway is that he's talking about lynching blacks, mm -hmm. right? Uh, even though he didn't mention anything about black people, okay? He didn't mention anything about lynching. Mm -hmm. uh, if that's your takeaway, again, that 
is your problem, right? You're looking at it that way, okay? Exactly. You're the one that's being racist, exactly. not him. It's really that simple. Genres in the country. I love the song. I was excited to cut it and thought it was actually a song that said something for a change, not just a, you know, here's another song for radio. Mm -hmm. Did you think, well, this might not go over well with some people, but I'm going to say it. On the second verse, it says, was that it said gun, you know, and that, you know, will tend to get people talking sometimes about that. So, um, you know, I didn't expect it to get the kind of heat that it got. Um, and I think that was more probably because of the video more so than the actual mm. song. Part of that heat was because of where the video was filmed in front of the Murray County Courthouse in Columbia, Tennessee, the site of a 1927 lynching of a black teen. For anybody that thinks that we picked that building specifically for that reason, because, you know, there was a lynching there or whatever. Did you know that? No. But I also don't go back 100 years and check on the history of a place before we go shoot. Thank you. Facts. Thank Facts. you. Nobody does that, right? Nobody does that, okay? And for the most part, nobody cares. Exactly. The only people that care are the people that are trying to make a whole bunch of something nothing. out of nothing. Because quite honestly, I'm going to tell you where a lot of this comes from. A lot of this comes from the fact that our lives, just in virtue of the fact that we live in a first world country, right? We live in America. People are too bored, right? Mm. They don't have any real things to worry exactly. about on a daily basis. Like, I don't know, surviving, mm -hmm. right? Um, so, again, they make up things to be triggered about, yeah. right? Oh, God. That courthouse, they used to lynch blacks outside of the courthouse. It might be racist. They mean, he, it's just a dog whistle. It's a dog whistle. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, bro. Get a life. Get a life. I'm so serious. I grew up around Confederate monuments, okay? North Carolina is like Confederate monument central, hmm. okay? And I've never been offended by one. Never been offended by one. Never. It, it never affected me personally, hmm. right? And honestly, I really didn't like it when... People were protesting statues. Like, for example, when I went to UNC, they um, got mad. The woke mob got mad about the names of buildings and the Silent Sam statue because it's like a Confederate monument or whatever. I was like, this has never affected my life, right? I've never been affected mentally mm -hmm. by the presence of a Confederate statue. Because it, it, it quite simply doesn't matter to me. I always looked at it as like, oh, well, this is just history, right? Exactly. This is what happened. This is history. You learn about it, right? You, you move, move on with your on. life. Okay. That's simple. Apparently, that's not the case for some people, right? Apparently not. And again, I grew up around this stuff, right? I grew up around Confederate monuments and I guess, you know, lynching sites, right? All my life. And it's never affected me negatively. Hmm. It's, also the, it's also the place that I go get my car tags every year. It's my county that I live in. Would you do it in that courthouse again, knowing what you know now? Knowing what I know now, probably not. But it's also, you know, I don't think, again, I'm not going to go back 100 years and check on the history of this building. I mean, because honestly, if you're in the South, you could probably go to any small town courthouse. You're going to be hard pressed to find one that hasn't had some sort of, you know, racial issue over the years at some point. Exactly. I mean, that's facts, right? That's what I'm trying to tell you guys. <laughs> like, living in the South, again, it's just everywhere you go is going to have some history behind exactly it, right that might not be pleasant but it doesn't matter <laughs> right it doesn't matter nobody's been affected by it today people need to move on past this but again they can't right and i think part of the reason why is because there's so much money in keeping this race conversation going mm -hmm. right um that they can't stop it, right? They have to find ways to say, oh, see, look, the white man's still trying to oppress us, right? They, they, he's trying to send signals. He's, there's dog whistles, right? They, these people, they want to be oppressed, right? Yes. They, they literally want to live in the 1950s. I wish we had a time machine. I really, I wish we had a time machine <laughs> so that we could send these people back to an era that they so desperately want to be a part exactly. of. Exactly. Right? They desperately want to be a part of. I can't wait till we get to the point where we can send people back to the past. Mm -hmm. Impossible. Maybe it's not. 
so that they can live out their lives in segregation yes. and being real victims of being discriminated yes. against like they so desperately want, right? I wish they could. I really wish they could. Just a fact. Critics also slammed Aldine for the images. Aldine says he didn't choose the specific clips, but the overall look of the video was his idea. The whole idea behind the video was to show, you know, the lawlessness and, mm -hmm. the, you know, disrespect for cops and just, you know, trashing cities and burning. It's just, I'm just not cool with that. So no, it just, cool with I don't know, I feel that. like the narrative really got switched over and became, you know, more of a racial type thing that's like, if that's what you got out of the song and the video, I mean, I almost kind of feel like that's on exactly. you. Exactly. That wasn't our intention. Yeah. So, again, you seen that, you heard that, okay? A anybody with common sense, right, that's not looking at the world through a racialized lens, uh, interpreted that song the way it was meant to be interpreted, right, which was to be an anti-crime song, right, anti-criminal song. But you know what? Again, these leftists, these race hustlers, they support thugs and criminals. Mm. Um, so, again, that's why they got so tri triggered, right? Because they don't like law and order. They don't like, uh, you know, criminals actually facing consequences for their actions. Mm -hmm. And that's why these liberal cities are lawless hellholes that are run by criminals, mm -hmm. right? This is what they like. This is what they like to live in. So, yeah, I can see why they'd be so triggered right, by that. Boohoo whining and crying racism. <laughs> but, again, it's, it's not racist. Again, it's just it's more about law and order, which they really don't believe in. So, hey, let me know what you guys think. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. Most importantly, share a black consumer perspective. Peace. Exactly. Well said. Because there was nothing about the song that was racist. Now, you get people here talking about how the song is racist, tomboy. Uh, the, you see, that's a problem. People who lived in back, back in, those, in the day when there was the era of tomboy, they knew that that was the fantasy they wanted to live in. And they lived in it peacefully. There was no need or no craziness to chop off any part of their body. Because it was just an illusion that people wanted to live and be in that uh, part of part of it but you see the part where people say oh um you you feel like identifying as a particular gender okay you have to shop off your part your genitals and everything and the next thing you move on to like i still will not understand the craziness that's because her parents knew what knew better for their child they didn't tell the child Look at her today, uh, Brittany Alden. She's very gorgeous, very pretty. Imagine if she had decided to live in the fantasy world to go shop off her genitals to be, probably be a boy, just in like this. But look at her. She, uh, she, she outgrew it. And that's how it's supposed to be. But you see people, they be like, oh, like, yes, since this is what you want, this is what you, you plan to, uh, doing. Therefore, let us allow you to and um, change to your the other i don't even want to talk about this thing because whenever i th think of it or i talk about it it drives me nuts but now let's talk about jason i didn't try that in the small town it's crazy that people will look at the song and say the song has racial undertone to it and it, the so song is racist that the song there is the song the song is talking about blm talking about a particular group of people so w what you're telling me is you saw something wrong with it you were looking at the song but you were saying something it, it just goes to show that your own imagination was what was playing with you and it's just crazy that people would go about to even do this yeah jason just answered the perfect answer to this because imagine if he knew that that building was a lynching no he would have asked other people who also sing in their song if they knew if some, that something has happened in that uh, in the so, something has happened in the area or the building, what's that talk? Hey, God. These people are very funny. It's it's funny how he has to even like what Greg said. It's funny how he can he has to even do an interview to explain the meaning of the song because nobody would who in their right senses would see the song or see the song or watch it and say oh yes it's okay to stomp on the flag burn the flag or it's okay to spit on the face of a cop it's okay to arrest a cop it's okay to be disrespectful to an elderly person or to a cop and everything it's okay to loot people's businesses let's talk about that nobody would see those things and say it's okay
there are tons of like imagine the with, with the way people just get up all up in their feeling want to be a victim all the time and say they are oppressed and the likes and all of those things like honestly like what greg has said here is if there was time machine machine you send most of these people the people who want to be a victim who feel like being a victim who feel so comfortable being a victim and have issues with this they should be sent back to the er era and the times where there was segregation and the likes and slave trade and slavery and everything let them go live in that, those times and see how yeah, how it was it's crazy but let me know what your thoughts are in the comment down below what are your thoughts about this so far i really love your honest contribution to this you can share other useful information you think might be really helpful and until next time see you in the next video